Welcome to the 2020 Summer Sock Knitting Cow from Bee Hooked. Today we're moving on to section two of the pattern where we'll add a little placeholder for the afterthought heel and move into knitting the leg. If you're just joining us, jump back a video to see how to knit the toe and the foot. And don't forget, the pattern and all of the cowl details can be found at beehooked.com slash K-A-L. I would love to see your progress so far. Use hashtag BeehookedSockCal to tag a work in progress photo of your socks on Instagram. At the end of the cowl, I'll randomly contact one person via Instagram messages who shared a photo so I can send them a Beehooked shop item of their choice. All right, last week you were tasked to finish knitting the foot of the sock, and here's what it'll look like when you do. Now an afterthought heel, as the name implies, is added after the fact. So after we knit the leg and bind off, we'll come back to knitting the heel. In order to skip the heel altogether and move on to the leg, we need to add a few rows of placeholder stitches, and that's where this waist yarn comes in hand. So choose any medium weight yarn you have on hand. You'll only need five yards or less. Just make sure it's a contrast color because you'll need to differentiate between these stitches and your sock stitches and you want it to be a smooth, plied yarn if possible. With the waist yarn, leave a tail that's about eight inches long, just sort of loop that over and lay it aside for a moment, and pick up your sock. It really doesn't matter at, at this point which needle you choose as your heel stitches, because a sock looks the same on both sides. Whichever you choose, pull the other needle through so the stitches are resting on the cord and you can knit with it. Keep the working yarn attached, but don't knit with it for now. Insert the needle in the first stitch and just place that waist yarn loop around your needle and knit the first stitch. Then with the waist yarn, knit each remaining stitch on this needle. Remember, we're working in rows for now, so when you knit all the stitches from this needle, flip it over. Then with the same free needle and the waste yarn, purl all the stitches on the same needle. Flip it one more time and knit all the stitches. This makes three rows of stockinette stitch and that's all you need to place the afterthought heel. When you finish up that final row, trim the waist yarn, again leaving about an eight inch tail, and this is what your sock will look like. Now there's just one more thing we need to do before we can pick up and start working with the working yarn in the round again. We need to first shift all of the heel stitches on the opposite needle since we flipped it. So orient your sock so it looks like this, and simply slide the heel stitches from one needle to the other. Now we can pick up the working yarn again, being sure to pull tightly on that first stitch and knit all the stitches, all the heel stitches from that needle.
As a side note here, the first stitch and the last stitch on this row will be really loose because the ends are sort of just hanging there. That's totally fine. Just pull on the tail to tighten them up and don't worry about it. Then get your needles set up to start working on needle one. Remember needle one is the needle at the front of the sock now and needle two is at the back of the sock. All right, we're moving on to the leg portion of the pattern. And rounds one through four of the leg have the same simple repeat. Knit all stitches on both needles. That'll give you just a little section of stockinette stitch before we start on the rib pattern for the leg. So round five starts the rib pattern for the leg and it's a pretty simple repeat too. What you'll do is knit three, purl one. And you'll just repeat that for the remaining stitches on this needle. Then work the same pattern, knit three, purl one for needle two. To finish the sock, check your pattern for the length of the leg. It'll be different for each size. You'll repeat round five until it measures that length from the last row of your afterthought heel. After you finish that, your sock will look something like this. It's a really nice stretchy ribbing that's really comfortable to wear. Now for the bind off, it needs to be really stretchy so that it'll fit over your foot. Trust me, not all bind offs are created equal when it comes to sock knitting. So to work this particular bind off, we're gonna knit the first two stitches. Then slide that needle under both of them so you can knit through the back loop. Now, I'll be honest, this can be a little fiddly. Sometimes that wrapped yarn will just fall off the needle before you can sort of knit it through. Just keep a nice loose tension and reserve this section when you have a little more patience and you can devote your full attention to it. Knit the next stitch. Then knit both through the back loop. Now the next stitch is a purl and we want to keep our pattern consistent. So go ahead and purl that one. Then insert the needle under both stitches and purl. Keep reading your knitting and knit the knits and purl the purls as you bind off for the remainder of this needle and for needle two.
When you have only one stitch remaining on the needle, trim a nice long tail, loop it through, and secure it. We'll come back to this in the next section of the pattern where we talk about weaving in all of these ends and finishing it up. Like before, you'll have a few days to finish knitting the leg and we'll pick up on the afterthought heel. So we'll knit the heel in the next section and talk about those finishing touches in section three of the pattern. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.